find out Brian Sullivan, or actually listed as G. Brian Sullivan, Chairman. And let's call the meeting to order. Uh, welcome to the meeting of the Howard Board of Appeals on September 28th. The purpose of this meeting is to hear and decide applications before the Board of Appeals, which have been brought pursuant to the bylaw of the Town of Howitch and the Massachusetts Zoning Enabling Act. As required by law, the town may audio and video record this meeting, which we are. Any person intending to either audio or video record this open session is required to inform the chair. Uh, during this meeting, the chair will recognize properly a, a member of the board or the attorney presenting a case to inform the chair if a protocol is not being followed properly. Uh, I'd like to have all the board members identify themselves. David Nunnally. Dave Royer. Al Donahue. Uh, Brian Sullivan, Chair. Chris Murphy. Tim Bailey. Okay. Well, let's uh, have the clerk call uh, our first case. All right. <coughs> case number 2022-26. This is a continued case. 22 Ocean Ave, LLC. Being represented by attorney William Kroll. Assessor's map 6B, parcel L10. In RH2 zoning district, the applicants seek a special permit or in the alternative, a variance to demolish and replace pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling pursuant to the Howard Zoning Bylaws 325-52 and 54 in Massachusetts General Law 48, section 6 and 10. And this is continued from July 27. Okay. Now, um, Attorney Kroll has presented us with a request to continue. I'd like to read that for the record. All right. Uh, case number 2022-26. I, William D. Kroll, Esquire, attorney for the petitioner on the above matter, hereby agrees that the time for holding public hearing and rendering a decision in the above matter be extended up and through and including the date, which is 180 days after this date, Agreement is assented to by the board uh, and by all present. Hereby waive the time limits for the provided uh, MGL Chapter 48. I will assume that reading's a motion. I'll move that we uh, continue this case to our first case on our next meeting, which I believe is October 26, 2022. Okay, do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, full approval of the board. Now, uh, Thank you. We, we have, as I indicated to you, that uh, we've worked out an agreement with the, um, with the abutter, so we should be making the presentation um, next month. Okay, if I could, I, I, think it's a, I think it's appropriate for me to ask this question. There are two abutters that... The one that had filed a, a written um, concern on behalf of, uh, he's a trustee of a supplemental yeah. needs trust. That's the one. That's the one that you that we reach agreement with. Right. Okay. Right. We've come to an agreement. We're revising the plans accordingly, and we'll get those to you as soon as they as soon as we have them. Okay. Uh, Mr. Cool, I'm signing this approval of the board, and uh, I'll have a copy email to you tomorrow. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Okay. Yes. That's fine. All right. The uh, next case. Um, next case is case number 202227. 20, 20, Dale M. and Susan E. Shaw. Through their attorney, William D. Crow. Owners of the property located 45 Christopher Way, Assessor's Map 108, Parcel X32. In the RR Zoning District, the applicant is seeking a special permit or any alternative, Thank you. a variance Thank you. to construct an addition retaining wall on the pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling pursuant to the Howitz Zoning Bylaws of 325-52 and 54 Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 6 and 10. Okay. Now, as we decided to hear this, this, this case uh, at the last meeting, um, we had closed the open meeting. So we had closed the open meeting before, so we need to reopen uh, the public meeting again. Okay. 
So if I could have a motion to reopen the public meeting on this case. I'll so move. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You should designate who's going to vote. Yeah, I'm going to do that a second. So, the, uh, as we assigned on August 31st, uh, voting on this case is uh, Al Donahue, Dave Nunnally, Chris Murphy, David Ryer, and Timothy Bailey. And, uh, and actually, I'd like to begin here by asking the, uh, that the public meeting is reopened. They ask the applicant to, and representative, Mr. Cole, to introduce yourselves and any people that are helping you. Thank you. The application. Thank you. Uh, Attorney William Kroll uh, from Howard's Port representing the petitioners uh, this evening. We were here um, on August 31, and so this is a continuation of that case um, so that we could supply additional information to the board. We had made a presentation regarding the addition meeting the requirements of the Gale case. Um, I don't think there was too much concern about that. It was more concern about the um, retaining wall. Uh, and so the discussion was whether we meet the requirements of the bylaw 325.17 B, sorry, 17 F2, F as in Fred 2, for a uh, as to whether the retaining wall is a structure similar to an open terrace, step, stoop, uh, and the like. And if it's under four feet in height, it would cut the uh, setback in half from 20 feet to 10, 10 feet. So at 15 feet, uh, we would meet that requirement um, of, of for the retaining wall, and uh, as Mr. Raya pointed out last time, and that was my the main thrust of my argument was we would not need a variance um, if we meet that requirement. Uh, then the concern of Mr. Shaw was uh, as to whether he could meet the four foot height requirement. So Mr. Shaw has handed out to you um, a statement that he wanted you folks to read uh, regarding. Um, his opinion is, as far as the hardship is concerned that's involved. And I know Mr. Ryer and the board asked for plans. Um, you know the environment right now as far as getting a surveyor, an engineer to do anything, and they're all five months out. Um, so the best we could think of was to give you a good picture of the retaining wall, of what the existing retaining wall looks like and what the new retaining wall would look like. Well, uh, can I just interject? Uh, uh, Mr. Ryer had also expressed concerns about the height of the retaining wall, and because I hadn't uh, really contracted with anyone uh, to build a wall, I had no uh, real concrete evidence of how high it was going to be. So I luckily was able to uh, get two of the uh, landscape contractors to come out and actually uh, uh, draw up what they uh, needed to uh, replace and move the retaining wall to uh, you know, within uh, the 15 foot, uh, which is the request uh, of the property line. And so the, both of them indicated that it was probably the maximum height of the retaining wall was going to be about five and a half feet. So just to cover that, um, uh, I uh, had the, uh, the surveyor uh, uh, redraw the, um, uh, the plans and with heights on the plans and also uh, with a note on there um, that in indicate uh, that the, the maximum height of the retaining wall was going to be uh, 5 feet 11 inches or less. So um, I'm hoping that that satisfies uh, you know, the requirement because uh, uh, you had indicated that you couldn't stamp something you know, that was uh, ambiguous. So this, I think, defines exactly what the retaining wall is uh, going to entail. Um, so in, in terms of the hardship aspect of it, um, uh, I, I have a, a boat, a small boat, 
And uh, the thing is, the, just because of the geometry of the property, it's uh, a narrow opening for uh, the existing driveway. And uh, I'm a novice with boating, so I can't back the, uh, the trailer into the driveway. Luckily, I have great neighbors. So my neighbor across the street works for Allen Harbor, and he moves boats around all the time. So if I have to bring the trailer home, I, I call him and he'll do it, or my next door neighbor, uh, John, is a CDL uh, truck driver, so he can back up anything. So uh, with, without a modification of the opening of the driveway, making it wider, there's no way I would ever be able to back the boat trailer up into it. Uh, and then, then there again, the other aspect of, of the hardship part is the fact is the, um, uh, the special permit. If that is approved in terms of granting the, uh, the the addition, uh, there's no way that a car is going to make it into the, the, the driveway, uh, into the garage underneath the addition uh, without moving that uh, retaining wall back as well. So those are the two aspects that I'm, I'm hoping will uh, justify, um, you know, uh, approval of, of the variance. So if I may add to that. Um, My client's main concern was is uh, the height of the wall closest to the dry to to the garage. It's not for the entire length of the wall. You can see from the picture, it doesn't need to be that high. But his concern was uh, that the excavator couldn't guarantee, nor can can Mr. Shaw, that it would not be more than four feet in height, as required by the bylaw. So. It's not for a very long distance, but it's a topographical feature because of the mound there that it has to be high enough to hold back the soil um, when the dry, if the driveway is widened. So the, the way I'm looking at the case is that if you accept that 325.17F, or 325.18F, it's my fault, um, would allow a four foot retaining wall in this location, 15 feet from the lot line without a variance. We're not really asking for a variance for that, the entire length of the wall, what we're, or for the, we're not asking for a variance for the setback. We're asking for a variance essentially for the height of the wall um, On the assumption you could have a wall in that location at four feet in height, we're asking for a variance of that four foot height requirement, is the way I look at it, to five foot 11 inches or less where, requ where required by the topography of the wall in its location shown on the plan. Well, I'm not, sorry if I, uh, I'm not sure I totally agree with that assessment. I, I think that, um, I mean, that makes it very specific. And then you would have to define when it uh, transitions from uh, the, uh, you know, the five feet, uh, six inches to less than four feet. And neither, I, I couldn't get the, um, uh, neither of the contractors to, to say, okay, and until they get the equipment in there and, you know, move uh, the, the, uh, the, the dirt away, I, I couldn't get a drawing uh, that would, say exactly where that was going to occur. So that's why I uh, went for the, uh, the, the plan where is, uh, it would, you know, just n it would n not be above the 5 feet 11 inches. But, you know, obviously near towards the end of the driveway, it wouldn't be any close to that dimension. But, you know, in the, the questionable area, which is, you know, close to uh, um, where, you know, you have to make the turn uh, into the, the garage, it would, you know, I, I couldn't, neither of the contractors could define exactly where that place was going to occur. But if it's approved to be 15 feet from the property line, then there's no issue. I mean, then they can build it the way they have to build it to be, um, you know, adequate to, to hold back the soil. I think we're so basically saying the same thing. Okay. That it's dictated by the topography of, of the soil, uh, of that mound. That would dictate when it has to be above four feet in height. Yeah, and, and uh, see where you're coming from, and 
looking at the wall and looking at the topography, which is well above it, a few feet in, I can understand that. Um, anything further at the moment? Okay. No. All right, the chairman, I'd like to ask uh, the members of the board for their, their comments and questions. Dave? I have no questions. Um, yeah, I think we can clearly grant a special permit for the addition, and I th think we can grant the, um, the variance for the wall. I think we do need to put a condition that it's not going to exceed 5 foot 11 inches, and then the contractor can determine <coughs> where it's going above. I mean, that's the best we're going to do, but I think that's, that's fine, because just aesthetically, I don't think he's going to want to run the whole thing at five foot. It's going to look pretty doggone ugly. So yeah, I no, think instead of going to stage <laughs> yeah. it, you know, I'm comfortable with that. Ugly years in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think we uh, we also ought to put a condition on that all the construction vehicles park on site. They've got plenty of room here between the on the old driveway there to park the vehicles because it is a little tight in there. So yeah, I'm okay with the variance and with the special permit. I think that special permit meets the requirements of the bylaw and both the Gale and Deirdre cases are just intensifying a pre-existing non-conformity. And I think the um, topography of the, the land over on whatever side it is, the, uh, I guess it's the west side of the property. Um, West side. Would, yeah, west side would support the grant of a variance. And it's only, it's, it, if you look at it the way Attorney Crowell uh, is looking at it, and I happen to agree, it's, it's only a minor dimensional variance. It's under two foot dimension in this type, uh, case being the height. And the courts give the boards a lot more discretion on minor dimensional variances than on other kinds of variances. So I think it's supported. That's all I have. Okay. I'm in full support of it. Um, yeah, I am as well. I just wanted to, we have no idea of the time frame at this point. Okay. And, and I don't believe we need to do a seasonal. Not if they park uh, the vehicles right. on the right. site. Yeah. Um, but uh, the path. are oh, you? No, my yeah. 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 There should be no problem. It's not space. Uh, are you concerned at all regarding construction vehicles being required to be parked on site? No. That's what I was just verifying. No, no, no not a problem. Because, I mean, I'm going to be taking the boat out of the water, and that's going to be stored at the, the marina, you know, for the winter. So that's going to open that uh, area. Yeah, so I, they can I, easily put uh, multiple cars there. If one of them has a trailer, they're going to ask Mr. Shaw to back it up <laughs> into the driveway. <laughs> If they don't no, mind I, it getting into Particularly stored. initially when you're tearing the wall down and so forth, I just wasn't quite sure at, at, in certain moments of this construction that you're going to be able to keep everything on site. That's all. But we just don't, I mean, on a consistent basis, we don't want, we want the vehicles right. on so, site. I mean, that's the other advantage of the neighborhood I live in. And I can get any of my neighbors to allow me to park uh, my cars or uh, construction vehicles on, on their okay. land. It, right. It's just a great neighborhood. All right, I have uh, no further questions. Uh, Chris? I, no, Dave summarized it perfectly. I have no further questions. No more questions. No questions. Okay. It, uh, anybody else, anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this application? Okay. All right. Well, there's no one else in the public uh, that's going to speak to it. Uh, any, any final comments at all from the board? All right. And I'd like to entertain a, a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. Case number 20, 22-26, excuse me, 22-27. Uh, Dale M. and Susan E. Shaw, through their attorney, William Kroll, are the owners of the property at 45 Christopher Way, and the board hereby grants a variance. Well, we're going to go for uh, the special permit. Special sure. permit initially, and to be included with a variance. Uh,
Dale M. Shaw, root number, let me see how you get here. The property is located at 45 Christopher Way, Assessors Mount 108, parcel X3-20 in Arizona District. The applicant has been granted a per special permit uh, to construct the addition and pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling pursuant to the Harbor Zoning Bylaw 325, 52, and 54, and MGL Chapter 48, Section 6 and 10. In addition, the board we move uh, to grant a variance in this case uh, for the removal of the existing retaining wall and the construction of a new wall in accordance uh, with the plan submitted with this application having found that uh, it is not to be greater than five feet 11 inches in height. Um, the applicant meets the requirements of the zoning by of the bylaw MGL chapter sec excuse me section 10 chapter 48 as the shape and topography of the land justify the variance and the failure uh, of the board to make this grant will result in substantial hardship to the applicant. The board further finds that this condition is specifically to this property and does not generally affect the entire district and that there will be no substantial detriment to the public good by the granting of this variance and that its granting will not nullify or substantially degrade from the intent and purpose of the bylaw. All work shall be performed in accordance with the plans. Uh, let's see. You might want to mention that uh, on the special permit it meets the Diedrich and yeah. Yale cases okay. too. All right, with regard to the special permit, it is uh, the bylaw and it covers by the da ga yeah, excuse me, Dale and Diedrich cases, um, meaning that the property does not um, in any way impact the neighboring properties in that neighborhood. Um, for the life of the approved project, all construction vehicles will be parked on the applicant's property and not on a public street or road. The violation of these terms and conditions in a special permit and variance may be enforced as a violation of the Harvard Zoning Bylaw uh, pursuant to General Law 48, Section 7 of the Harvard Zoning Bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. I'll second that motion. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I'm hoping the board will approve both issues. It's, it's been done. It's, it's one issue, just in two long paragraphs. Right. So may I suggest the board take two votes because the sure. standards are different for a special permit versus a variant? That's uh, that's a reasonable request. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So we'll uh, treat it as two motions then. Okay. I think so that makes first, sense, yes. Okay, so let's have, uh, first one, the first motion regarding the special permit. Uh, how do we, I'd like to hear a call, call for the vote. Yeah. Aye. 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 Okay, so all in favor, motion, that motion carries. And on the second motion, regarding the variance, I have a vote for the board. Aye. Aye. Okay. And that carries as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just uh, for the record, uh, I'm going to note that the uh, not to exceed five foot eleven inches in height is a condition. That was in the uh, that was in the reading. Right, but that is a condition. Okay, that was in the reading. We'll make sure it's not six feet, <laughs> Mr. Right. Okay. We go one inch over. Well, you know you'll be out there. You can come back with new tape. plans. So I, both, you know. both contractors indicated it would be five feet six or less. So As the building <laughs> commissioner might be out them. there looking at it. So. Right. Thank you very much for all your, your time and patience on this and over two hearings. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Thank luck. you. Yeah. Yes, thanks for the bigger plans. Appreciate it. Good luck on the project. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to find uh, contractors to do the building because the, the landscaping uh, contractors, I got quite a few people who are interested in that, but I have yet to get a, uh, any kind of uh, response from four of the major builders in the, in the in town who were highly recommended. So I'm just hoping I could find someone to do the, the construction. 
Yeah, I'm having trouble getting sewer well, sure contractors to give me a proposal. He must be calling the wrong numbers. Oh, okay. sure they would get back. Alrighty. I'll help. Yes. Thanks again. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, case number 2022-28. Brian A. Toronto and Michelle Toronto through their attorney, uh, James, uh, excuse, through James Haggerty, Reef Builders, uh, P.O. Box 186, West Dennis. They had a property over located at 24 Green Needle Lane, SS's map parcel, map four parcel, T2-13 in the RH1 zoning district. The applicant seeks a uh, special permit to demolish and replace pre-existing non-conforming single-family dwelling pursuant to the Howard Zoning Bylaw 325-54, Mass General Law, uh, Chapter 40A, Section 6 and 10. Good evening. My name's Jim Haggerty from Reef Builders. Hold on one second, please. All right. Okay, thank you. Um, assigning your voting, the chairman's assigning voting this case will be uh, Al Donahue, Dave Nunnally, Chris Murphy, David Weyer, and Joe Beasley. Hey, Mr. Chairman, before you begin, I do receive an abutter's notice. Um, as you mentioned, I'm in not voting in this case, uh, but nor do I think it would cloud my judgment or potential question or, or anything on this thing. So, you know, Tim was still going to remain on the, on the board and on the panel and would be asking questions. Okay. Making comments. Okay. So now. All right. Here we go. Now I'm Jim Haggerty. I'm going to ask the representative to go. identify themselves <laughs> and anyone who's going to be helping you. <laughs> All right. Jim Haggerty. I'm representing um, Brian and Michelle Taranto. Uh, we are, um, let me just go through all this. They bought the house about a year ago. And it is non conforming in a couple different ways. But the overall project here is we're going to take down the the roof structure and all the exterior walls and interior walls. So all that's left is the foundation and the first floor framing. We're going to do an addition in the uh, the rear right corner and an addition in the front uh, left corner of the house. So in terms of you know, setbacks and so forth and nonconformities, um, start with the lot itself. It's an undersized lot. It's only 10,000. Um, 670 square feet only has 105 feet of frontage where a 150 is required. Um, the home itself was built in 1969 and the setbacks when it was built an existing house the uh, well the coverage itself I'll start there coverage it was is at 15.2 percent the um, that's building coverage site coverage is at 28.6 um, the front yard setbacks at 26, which conforms. The right side setbacks at 20.7, which uh, conforms. The left side is at 15.3 feet, which is non-conforming. And the rear setback is at 38.6 feet. And the building height is uh, it's a simple ranch. It's about 18.3 feet high currently. So what we're proposing is to add that those two additions I spoke of the one uh, the building coverage will be increased to 21.1 the site coverage to 32.9 the rear setback the front setback will stay the same the rear setback will be at 20 um, the rear setback will be at 38 33.5 now left side setback is going to remain at 15.3 the Left side is the area that is non-conforming. We're, we're proposing to pull the garage forward. Um, we are going to not be increasing that non-conformity, um, but we will be adding that space in some room above. Um, this is going to um, this is um, I'll just go through my list here. So single family de de uh, uh, dwellings make up the neighborhood, although this is a little larger. Um, it is, uh, we feel the structure is not more um, substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. It will not increase any uh, nuisances, hazards, congestion, et cetera. Um, we will not be increasing any of the 
existing nonconformities, and we'll be using the existing <laughs> foundation, so uh, we won't be encroaching any further towards those setbacks. And we are adding additional habitable, you know, square feet with the second floor and such, but we do feel it's um, in keeping with the neighborhood and not substantially more detrimental in our belief. Um, with that, I'll be able to uh, hopefully answer any questions you may have. So, Chairman, I could, Chair, I'd like to ask the members of the board for their comments and, and questions. Don and Dave? I don't have any questions, Colonel. Um, yeah, I think this application meets the requirements of the bylaw and the Gale and Deirdre cases. They're simply um, increasing the existing nonconformity, namely adding habitable space within the setback. I don't think it's going to have any substantial detriment to the neighborhood. Um, I do think we need the construction time condition as well as our general condition. And you are aware you're going to have to redo the septic, right? You've got yes, the Board yep. of Health letter. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's all I have. I have a question. Where is the septic actually located on that property? It's going on in the back uh, right corner. Back right corner. Yeah, where is it currently? Um, it's in the center of the backyard. It is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Is that what? Uh, when was it? That both the uh, bulkhead and the uh, outdoor shower. Yes, I didn't. I didn't. I forget to mention the bulkhead. So it's in the back of the house now. We're removing that. We're going to put it on the left, the right side of the house. Um, it is less than four feet high, and it's going to be thirteen point. Wait a minute, somewhere thirteen point three feet. One of my notes here. Thirteen point five feet All right. will be to the bulkhead, so it's less than half the setback. Thank you. All set, Ed? Yep. No okay. further questions. Okay. Um, Tim. No questions. Tim. Tim. No, no questions. No questions. Um, just want to just get your your comment regarding being able to maintain all your equipment. On, on the property during construction? Um, subcontractor vehicles and such? Yes. Yes, that would be normal. There might be some up to Green Needles Loop, which is helpful, but there might be some times where there's a cement truck or two uh, waiting to come in and maybe a pump truck. So there might be you know, a half a day maybe of some interruption, but it won't stop anybody from getting to their homes because it's a loop. And uh, what's your anticipated time frame? About 10 months. Starting actually two months from now, wherever you want. about right, yeah. Okay. Yep, as soon as we can. We're ready to go. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> it was mentioned that the uh, Board of Health is, re is requiring you to comply in your septic system. Yep. I also want to note, let you know that obviously the Planning Board didn't express an opinion yet because they did not have a meeting prior to this meeting tonight. Okay. So the Planning Board may have some comments which we haven't seen yet. Okay. Just to let you know that, you know, I doubt that anything's gonna happen, yeah. but but be okay. aware of the fact that everybody else has signed off on it, uh, except for <coughs> the county board and the uh, board of health. Okay. All right. Uh, any additional comments on any of that? Uh, that being the case, uh, anybody in the public that wants to speak to this application? Good evening, everybody. My name is Vincent Why don't you take me Good evening, everybody. My name is Vincent Costello. I'm an, I am a neighbor of Brian and Michelle Toronto, and I'm in favor of exactly what they want to do. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Is there anyone else? I'm not to hear anyone else that uh, wants to speak to it. I uh, have a motion to uh, close the uh, public, public hearing. So I'll move. So I'll move. Okay, Chris. And uh, who's second? Second. Okay, Al. Yeah. All right, case number, <coughs> excuse me, case number 2022-28, Brian A. Toronto and Michelle Toronto. To James Haggerty, Reef Builders, P.O. Box 
146 West Dennis. They are the owners of 24 Green Needle. The board hereby grants a special permit uh, for the property at map four, parcel T2-13 in the RH zoning district. The applicant seeks a special, uh, I'm moving on to another one. All right, the, um, we have now moved on regarding that. It meets the Gale and Diedrich cases. Um, the following conditions uh, will be subject to this permit. The, there shall be no demolition uh, exterior construction on new landscaping during the period of June 30 to Labor Day in any year. Uh, this condition or the conditions of approval that is a violation of the terms and conditions of the special permit may be enforced as a violation of the Howard Zoning Bylaw pursuant to MGL Chapter 48 Section 7 and Howard Zoning Bylaw as these may be amended from time to time. Second, I'll second that motion. Okay, um, just wanted to just discuss and, and just maybe just real quickly here. If um, I realize that it was located, it's, it's near you know beef section, correct? I, I, it is. It is. Yep. It is. And um, just want to just turn the discussion. If if the contractor can maintain everything on the property does that impact the time frame that we're you know I mean, we have a seasonal situation here of, of june 30th to labor day and if you can maintain all the vehicles on the property does that impact our decision on making uh, the project required to be shut down between june 30th and labor day I'm not in my opinion because no. it's a pretty close neighborhood. That's when people are here, want to be outside. Yeah. They're not going to want all construction activity yeah. going on, hammering, yeah, no discussion on this. Okay. music, whatever's going on with the contractors. But I understand you plan on doing this within the next 10 months. That's right, and we can start in a couple months, but um, it would be all interior work at that point anyway. It would just be painting and such okay, when so it came down to the summertime. There's no exterior work. Yeah, we'd have the landscaping done before then. <coughs> so. All right. So, by by doing this 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 life of the project, does that imply that we're not allowing him to do interior work? No, it doesn't. Where it only covers exterior work. Okay, so right. make sure. Right. I have it down. I didn't mention Did you mention exterior? I didn't Ex hear that. Demoli no Dem demolition, Dem no exterior construction or new landscaping. Or, or exterior construction. Okay, I just want to make sure here. Right. Right. And the new landscaping okay. is the idea, you know, you don't want major I that. trucks I didn't and hear equipment. You say the word exterior, and I, I think I did. Okay, well, I missed yeah. it. I apologize. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, enough from the chairman. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so the motion's been made. Uh, do I, you have a second by, by Dave? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, fully approved. Thank you. Your uh, approval. Thanks. Good luck with your project. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I'm just going to ask for a momentary recess. I'm going to go to the men's room. Sure. Okay. I'm going to give you a moment here. Run the clock. Yeah, we'll run the clock. And it's an intermission period. Right. Okay, thank you.
My game. On Monday and Tuesday. That way, there, if one doesn't make, we just. Even if we cancel? All right. All right. Well, we don't want that to happen. I mean, this time of the year is getting to where. Uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of the people I was out there with today are yeah. getting ready to leave in two weeks. Uh, That's assuming they can find some place. So one, guy was, uh, one guy was getting text messages and with pictures from his homeowners association. The lobby was underwater. He was in Naples. The lobby was underwater. Um, kick things off with a uh, review of the minutes from the August meeting. Did uh, everyone have a chance to review them? Yes. Yes. And um, I'll find my copy here someplace. Yeah, I'm looking for mine. But does anyone have any, any corrections that need to be made? Yeah, I'll move that the minutes be approved as submitted. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Nice job. Yeah, um, well, the department is shorthanded. I've been writing the minutes. And then, but it, what I just want you to know that Alicia is still viewing the film and checking my minutes that I write. So the, she is going over the, and she's and she did make you know a couple of corrections and so forth for night efforts. So it's uh, okay. Okay. Um, excuse me, sir. I know you're here tonight, uh, and you know I. I is there a portion of this meeting that you want to make comments? Yeah, I want to know what you've been asked, how, the, how things... Okay, all right, thank you very much. And your name, sir? Peter Gorey. Okay, Gorey. Okay, all right, so an old business here. Uh, last week we brought up the uh, Cape Cod the commission and the Earthworks Mining Update, okay? I did speak to uh, Cape Cod Commission. Basically, there's nothing that's going to be happening on that thing until some point in October. It is before them. Uh, they were not uh, <coughs> sure as to what um, requirements are going to be from our town at the moment you know, as far as to hearing the case and so forth. All right? 
Now, obviously, we, and I'll get to, on the new business, but we have a new building commissioner that's starting. And he'll be starting next week, and I'll get into that into, into new business. But when he arrives on, you know, on the scene, I'll make sure he's aware of this thing so he can personally take his time to check out the Cape Cod Commission and, and talk to whomever over in Dennis as well. Okay. Um, I visited the site, and clearly the work that's being done, from what I can tell, uh, is um, on, the, on the Dennis portion. What I'm not, what I don't know, and maybe someone here does, is that if it's under one lot, one continuous lot, not in separate lots, and part of it, the, the, the one lot is areas in Harwich, which it is, and the other sections in Dennis. What, if it, it had to do with any kind of zoning issue in this situation, what, what control would, or area that, that this board would have to be involved with? From whatever you gave us last time, and not a, I don't have it here in my file yeah. at the moment, but it looked like maybe it was just the parking lot that was in Harwich, where they'd have ingress and egress and the, the actual- The buildings in Harwich as well. The, I'm sorry? Yeah, the buildings in Harwich. Okay, but I mean, where they're doing the, whatever it is, the mining or whatever, right. that was it's, back it's, in Dennis. It's all, it's so all in Dennis. We would have no jurisdiction there. Okay. It would just be if they wanted to do something, you know, in the, where the um, egress, but ingress and egress is in the building. Right, if the egress is coming through Harwich, it's going way up. Right, I think we'd have to have the building commissioner go out there and see what's going on. Okay, all right, okay. All right, I just wanna get some of my notes out here for the next one. <coughs> So Mass Housing Partnership, um, generally you know the fact that um, I had a discussion with them on the 26th. Uh, the conference call was strictly regarding uh, understanding the uh, process of a 40-day application and particularly regarding that for an application for the town to make to get technical assistance uh, regarding uh, should we ever have a uh, uh, comprehensive permit application filed in a 40D uh, case coming for the board. Uh, there was no discussion regarding any particular case during the discussion. It was just learning what the process is. And they did send me an application, uh, which when we do have a, at some point, a certified, I mean, a comprehensive permit application, then we file it. There's only really a 15 minute, maybe a 20 minute phone call if I had some questions regarding, you know, the process and so forth and, and discussion of how you, you know, uh, select and get a consultant appointed. So basically, uh, if we do ever have a CPA uh, presented to us, the, um, next step would be to uh, file for the grant. The fact that the town hasn't used a technical assistance and had a grant since 2004 or 2005 was the last time the town used a, um, a consultant on a technical review for mass housing, then they felt the fact that uh, they would probably be proving you know, $15,000 or the full amount for a grant. The, uh, at that stage, the uh, person who's ever, and again, uh, if we do ever have a CPA, then when I do the application, that's gonna go in front of our attorney first before it gets sent in, just to then review it. It's something that will be signed by myself uh, after review of this board, and the um, chairman of the selectmen, then it's sent in. And quite frankly, you're just looking for, um, that's all it involves. It's a very fairly short application. Um, and uh, then the bills get be sent in after we meet with the consultant. They would indicate what other resources that we would need. Of course, that's in view of meeting with a consultant and with our attorney. What other resources, technical assistance, experts, et cetera, 
that they think may be needed to review uh, whatever project it might be on a, on a CPA. Um, at that point, uh, they get identified, hired, uh, and the, all the bills are a $15,000 grant that gets submitted basically on a monthly basis or a periodic basis by the consultant to Mass Housing. If they feel any time that there's a, uh, we're, we're, uh, really banging the budget, they may bring an issue to our attention and say that these additional things may be a cost of the town. But in their experience, the $15,000 has typically uh, maintained, been, been enough to uh, pay for, you know, most of the assistance that's needed from, from the project consultant. They provide a list of consultants? Yeah, they gave me a list of four to six. I kept what was on there. And, um, and since, if we ever do have a CPA, our, our attorney, um, in talking to her, she has experience with a, with a, a number of them, and uh, she would probably, based upon their availability, right. she would first list out, I refer this guy, this guy, this guy, in, in, in any particular order, that would get presented to Mass Housing, and then they would, based upon our preferences, and based upon the availability of those, of those consultants, they make the assignment. We don't. Okay. Okay, they make the assignment. Okay. So that is um, that is the process. And, um, let me see here. Uh, one second. Something else I had. questions or comments on that? Okay. And uh, Mr. Gurry, you wanted to? Sure, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just actually going to say hello and thank you. I, I know your job's going to be really tough. Should the uh, application for the comprehensive permit come before you? Um, I've been a commercial real estate broker and consultant for nearly 20 years, and I would just let you know that I think the $15,000 is going to be woefully inadequate for this site, um, given the wastewater, water, traffic, and then the analysis of the financials for the town. So that's just a personal and professional comment. I was obviously have interest. I am sure. uh, an abutter. So. If I could comment on that. Uh, of course. Basically, a lot of the professionals that get hired, um, they will be, they will be a responsibility of the developer, the applicant be paying for. Right, but then there's a peer review, right? I mean, a traffic study done by a developer who wants to do traffic counts in the winter, which they've already said, when we know most of us who live there know that the traffic counts have to be conducted in the summer to give an adequate read, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be analyzing their numbers. And actually, if I may comment right now, I, we're not tonight I know. discussing any particular case. Just, just, on, just on, okay, so just purely if a CPA came before you, sure. the analysis given by a consultant needs a peer review, and that's what I do for a living, and it's what I just suggest that once you go through at $15,000 for this project, if it would come before you, would be woefully inadequate. That's all I'm suggesting. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, and thanks. We'll, and we'll have to make a collection amongst the guys. Yeah, I'm sure you have other professionals on the board that can help you. And I know it's going to be a long, we're going to get to know each other, and I appreciate your time and indulgence. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other comments on mass housing? Yeah. Okay. All right, new business. So we have a new building commissioner. His name is uh, John, uh, and he goes by Jack Mee, or May. And he, I believe he starts next week. He's, he's not <coughs> at the moment, but he's uh, in reading my in reading the article in the paper. He indicated that he plans on moving to Howard. 
and that Harwich was an area, a town, that he wanted to move into in the first place. Yeah. Right. So we saw this opportunity come up, and I believe the fact that he's going to be. So hopefully that means if we have a, a new building commission who's a resident of the community, we may uh, have one that's, that stays home longer than three to six months. Which would be good. Okay. Um, I have one comment for any, anybody else on that. Okay. One comment under uh, new business. Uh, I don't have it in a moment, but does anybody have any new business that they want to? Okay. All right. So next month, and I believe prior to our next meeting, I'm going to be meeting with the board, uh, board of selectmen regarding the annual review, which you've done several times. Um, but at that review, uh, I'm going to bring up to the selectmen a couple of things. One, um, that uh, my understanding is that they may be initiating a comprehensive review of our zoning regulations. I read that in the paper. I have not gotten any memos from them. I think in the past, and David and Al, who are more experienced in the board, it appears the fact that when zoning regulations are done, done by the planning board and the selectmen and so forth, we haven't necessarily been in that room. And I'm going to meet with the selectmen, when I meet with them, I'm going to request the fact that we are in the room. Because many of these zoning regulations, you know, if they're, if they're not clear, uh, don't, don't help us render decisions without, you know, on a sound, you know, I think be, being absolutely clear that what it is, and I think one of the situations is with garages. Right? Well, there's a whole bunch of them, as we know. Right. So what I'm asking the board to do is to uh, maybe make a couple of comments to me tonight. What what uh, zoning regulations you think are ones that that are inadequate for our, for our decisions? Just so I have a couple of things in in mind when I bring this up to the board. I want to be able to say to them, like, for instance, you know, you ask me the question. Well, give me an example of problems we've got. And I want to be able to, uh, when I meet with them. When's your meeting, case? Brian? Huh? What's, your, what's the date of your meeting? Uh, I think it's actually the 31st. It actually may be after our next meeting. But the October? Yeah, it's in October. Okay. Towards the end of October. So... Um, if uh, any of you guys could send me an email, a note regarding zoning regulations you think that need to be that are, uh, <coughs> are uh, yeah, according inadequate. to the paper, they're not going to have the consultant review zoning. It's going to be the planning board. They took that out of the scope of the consultant the town's proposing to hire, according to the newspaper article. I didn't see that one. Yeah. So I need to have the selectmen uh, recommend to the planning board that they include us in the review. Yeah, it would be a pleasant change. Okay. Um, I mean, to me, one of the main things was was uh, the issues with non-conforming lots and in 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 uh, detached garages. Garages, bedrooms. I mean, just. I'll, I'll go through, because we've had the same things come up, as you know, over and over and okay. over again. Yeah, so if I could get your input, guys, and particularly Dave. Accessory yeah, buildings, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's in uh, perhaps the next meeting. If, you could, if we could put a list, if my meeting is, is after the selection, but I just want to get a few, just make sure I can walk in there and I have a few points to, to bring to your attention as an examples. Okay. And then we can certainly find the time I think to, uh, I think we need, it usually requires a next meeting, find out what the planning board is going to do and get a time frame. So perhaps gradually, if it's time frame is going to be, they're not doing this till March, whatever, then maybe at each meeting we have in between, we can have a discussion and, and build a suggested case as to how we want to see that, that zoning regulation amended so that it's clearer. You know, agreement on that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I think um, kind of covers things. Uh, any other new business? All right. Without any other comments, so forth. Um,
hear a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Wait, we need a second. Second. I need a second. So. Second from Dave. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. All in favor, okay. <coughs> Yeah, I'll send you something on that, Brian. All right, thank you. We need his clothes. And, and the reason it goes to the planning is because it's um, in the town bylaw, I think, that the planning board has jurisdiction o 